Today we're going to look at a nice problem from the 1979 Bulgarian Math Olympiad. And I think this problem is really nice and clever, so I'm excited to show everyone this. Okay, so let's define a function f of k by the following rule. We consider this quadratic polynomial where the variable x and the parameter is k, and we find its roots and then pick out the maximum of those two roots. And, well, that's the value of f of k. And then our goal is to find the minimum value and the maximum value of f of k. And let's just look at our quadratic polynomial here. It's k squared plus 1 times x squared plus 10k times x minus 6 times 9k squared plus 1. Okay, so I think maybe the first thing to do is to realize that since we're talking about larger and smaller, well, we're always going to have real roots. Otherwise, if we're working with complex roots, there's no real notion of larger and smaller. But if we're going to have real roots, then needless to say, we need to have real values k. And so I think maybe a good place to start is to find the values of x here that produce real values of k. And, well, those values of x will be exactly the image of our function f of k. And I'd like to point out here that all along we have to keep in mind that since the constant term here is negative, observe that the constant term is 6 times k squared plus 1, or 9k squared plus 1 with a minus sign here, that means the smaller root is negative and the larger root is positive. Just think about how this would factor into x minus something times x plus something. Okay, so in order to find the values of k that are allowable, what we'll do is rewrite this instead of a quadratic equation where we're you know, using x as the variable, we'll do it where we're using k as the variable. But that's just regrouping. Okay, so let's do that. So, like I said, we're going to regroup and, well, what will the coefficient of k squared be? Well, we'll have an x squared here and we'll have a minus 54 here. So here we have x squared minus 54 times k squared, and then the coefficient of k is simply 10 times x, so we have plus 10 times x times k, and then the constant term here will be, let's see, x squared minus 6, so plus x squared minus 6 equals 0. But now what we'll do is solve this quadratic equation for k. But that'll give us the allowable values for x, but those allowable values for x will be the outputs of our function f of k here. As notice, the f of k, those are roots of this polynomials, but roots play the role as x variables over here. And then we can simply take the smallest and the largest. Okay. So solving for k, what do we have? Well, we're going to use the quadratic formula here. So we'll have negative b, so that will be minus 10x plus minus the square root of, let's see, we'll have b squared, which is 100x squared minus 4 times a times c, so that'll be 4 times x squared minus 54 times x squared minus 6. And then this is all over, let's see, 2 times x squared minus 54. Okay, good. Okay, so these are the values of k, you know, solving this equation in terms of x. Okay, but like I said, what we want is the k values to be real, because that'll force the x values to be real. But that means we need this discriminant to be zero. But observe that every term in this discriminant, that's the stuff under the square root, is divisible by four. So we might as well divide the whole thing by four and multiply out what we have you know, to the right here. So that'll give us 25x 
squared. And then after that, we'll have minus x to the fourth, and then plus 60x squared. And then after that, minus 324. Like I said, we want this to be bigger than or equal to zero to force k to be a real number. Okay, but now from here we can combine some things and uh, we might as well multiply by a minus sign as well just to flip this so the highest order term or the highest degree term is positive. So that'll leave us with something like this. We'll have x to the fourth minus 85 times x squared and then plus 324 is less than or equal to zero. So that's the inequality that we're looking at now. But this actually factors kind of nicely and it factors like this, x squared minus 81 times x squared minus four. And like I said, we want that to be less than or equal to zero. But then those are just differences of squares. So obviously those will factor pretty nicely as well. We have x minus nine, x plus nine, x minus two, x plus two. And like I said, we want that to be less than or equal to zero. Okay, so let's finish this thing off. So using the argument we started on the last board, in order for everything to be a real number in this situation, we needed, well, this product, x minus nine times x plus nine times x minus two times x plus two to be less than or equal to zero. But that's a quartic polynomial. It's pretty easy to graph and it has the following graph. But now let's observe that we can immediately see when that's less than or equal to zero. That tells us that x is either between negative nine and negative two or it's between two and nine. But let's observe that by this observation that we made earlier, the smaller root is less than or equal to zero whereas the larger root is bigger than zero. So all of the smaller roots happen in here. And I guess I should say that all x values from these intervals are roots. And that's because, well, they correspond to certain k values that solve this equation. We don't actually know what those k values are, but we could reverse engineer them if we wanted to. Maybe we'll sketch that at the very end. And then over here, these values between two and nine represent the larger roots. But that's actually enough to have this whole thing wrapped up. We can see from here that the minimum possible value of f is equal to two. Well, because f is supposed to take the larger root of this polynomial equation. And then the maximum possible value of f is nine. And like I said, that's enough to have this thing all sorted out. That being said, if we wanted to find the values of k that corresponded to these maximum and minimum values of f, what would we do? Well, let's do that down here. Let's plug in x equals two, which is corresponding to the minimum value of f. And what will we get here? Well, we'll have a k squared plus one, and then plus, that'll be 20 times k, and then minus, well, it's still gonna be a six times nine k squared plus one, and then we have this is equal to zero. But then that gives us a quadratic equation in k that's guaranteed to have um, a real root by our construction before, but that would be the value of k, or actually that gives us two values of k that correspond to the minimum value of f. And then similarly, you could plug in x equals nine, and you would find two values of k corresponding to the maximum value of f. And that's a good place to